and we're back with some more RimWorld. And today we're going to be immediately dealing with the siege. It's a small little baby siege that showed up a while ago. Um, however, it came just on the heels of this siege, which has resulted in a really weird scenario. There was a bunch of pawns that were involved in the siege that got kicked off the map or ran away. And they've come back. Some of them have actually shown up with this siege, including one who we've still got the alert for. Where is it? Shea. She got a sick from an infection when she was here on the last siege. Then she left the map and came back immediately while still suffering. Like, all, all her wounds are tended, but... Yeah, she hasn't recovered from that infection yet. I, I don't know, it's weird. I didn't realise that they could come back so soon and actually still be no longer healed. Or just not healed. Yeah, we're gonna grab Vile Soup here and we've given them a doomsday. Now, I was gonna mortar these people, but we're in a rush. We, we wanna... There's some changes, drastic changes I wanna make to our crops and food in general. But we can't do that until we get rid of this siege. So I think... We are going to get a nice shot in. Ooh, right about there, maybe. Ooh, yeah, there. There looks really good. Right there. All right, well, take this shot. How much invisibility you got left? Seven seconds. Okay, slow that down a bit. I want to make sure we get a nice deep shot. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Sorry for the tease. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, Emily's exes are assaulting the colony, colony, then they immediately changed their minds and decided that they're fleeing. I wonder why. Maybe it's because most of them are dead. Ah, oh, that was just... Mmm. Mmm. So tasty. Actually, I think we'll take a couple of prisoners. We haven't... Our food is still pretty desperate, but I think we'll be okay to grab a, at least a couple. Well, unfortunately, the doomsday person got away from us, which was eh, kind of annoying. The other doomsday person got vaporized in the first doomsday shot. Um... No, oh, and while we're at it, can you, yeah, strip those people down? We'll take the ones that... We're, we're not going to capture these because they're males. We're trying to collect some more females. It's really annoying. Our numbers are still way imbalanced. So we've captured the only female that was left alive from that block. With that mess taken care of, we're going to remove the roof on this entire area. And we're going to unplug the lights. The problem is it's just it's eating into our... Mm. I did a whole bunch of testing on this on the side over the weekend. Yeah, these are not what we need to start with. We, could, we should end up with these, definitely. But this is too early and too much of an investment. We should be switching to a more of a greenhouse-based strategy with a lot of solar panels. So that's what we're going to do. Also, as well as that, it's boiling hot in there. It was over 50 degrees. So we're going to unroof everything so it'll work fine. Also, we're plugging out the lights and dismantling a bunch of the chem fuel generators to free up a bunch of resources. Well, today is going to be all about getting our food sorted so we can start hiring again, because right now we are desperately short on crops, and we need these potatoes to come in. That volcanic winter really hurt us, but eh, at least we got, it got me focused. Since the volcanic winter, our first crop of potatoes are coming in. That should sort us out. Especially considering we got rid of a bunch of these chem fuel generators, we should have enough chem fuel to last us a little bit longer until we can start producing that properly. Plan is, we are going to take this area down here, and we're going to fill it full of solar panels, and we're going to use them to power our sun lamps. We should be able to run, well, say about 14 to 16 sun lamps off the solar slash wind we're going to stick in here. And we're going to use that to do a lot of greenhouses. It'll make us resistant to any more volcanic winters and uh, any potential nasty toxic fallouts we might get. Having almost a thousand potatoes in the fridge feels, feels pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Now, as for the storage question, there was a lot of stuff in the comments. But basically the general consensus was don't make it too easy on yourself. That's being a wimp, and yeah, I kind of got to back him up on that. We could increase the size of the food storage, but that's just giving ourselves too much of an out. But what I would like to do is clean up the mess that we've got in here in terms of clothing and weapons. This sort of annoys me, and I don't think this is as, well, I don't think this is as much of a cheat, let's say. If you go to the storage section here, you'll see I've installed a, a mod, it's, ah, uh, that's it, LMW's Deep Storage. Now, I turned off a whole bunch of options in here, and I just left this with a few. One is the weapons locker, which will allow us to store a whole bunch of weapons in a small space. I went with the steel one, because why not? We'll build one of those and see how it works out. The second is a clothing rack. Now, a clothing rack should mean we'll be able to, well, store a bunch of clothing in here without actually having it all over the place. I do find it a bit annoying that you can store, like, 20, 23 pants take up 23 slots, which is the same as how much potatoes again? It just, eh, it doesn't quite sit with me. It's the same as having a, a t-shirt in there or an alp Yeah, a button-down shirt takes up more space than a doomsday rocket or a triple rocket. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll give them a try this round. If people think they're OP, we can always rip them out. Now, where were we? Yes, weapons locker will go in here, and I still haven't moved everyone over to these new quarters, uh, namely because I want to do a few other things. So while we're finally getting back on top of food, so much food at last, we're building ourselves up this power brick down here. Oh, we got flat screens. I'd forgotten I'd started the research on that. We'll hammer out bionic replacements while we're in here. Uh, just, uh, I'd forgotten it for up until now. We 
can't afford it, but at least we can get it started. All right, but this here will be the, the power source for our sun lamps. The thing is, these solar generators work during the day and at night time they're off, which is basically the same cycle as the sun lamps. I've uh, done a whole tutorial on this that I'm going to be putting up tomorrow, but yes, yeah, so sun lamps and solar panels, they just work so well together, it's amazing. Anyway, let's uh, skip this forward a bit while we continue this construction project. We're going to be doing, we're going to get our farming sorted and, oh, and we got to get our accommodation sorted as well. Megas Loth Revenge, yeah, we're having a lot of those today. Uh, we just need more food desperately, and please tell me you've winged a uh, 427 versus 420. Ooh. Do we let them take another shot? If they take another shot, they might be able to slow it down below 4.27. Ooh, yeah, I, I think I think we let them do it. You're hunting a guinea pig. Uh, you can, you know what, you can come down and help out. If this all goes pear-shaped, you can you can kick in and, and maybe uh, help out poor Desky here. You got it down to 418. That is perfect. Run. Just run. Just as long as it's going to swing at you, you can make it away. We'll get someone in to help you out. Some tribals have shown up. We picked up some silver and some herbal medicine, but I think, I think we're going to give them a few gifts. Um, why not? Thing is, if we trade with them and we offer them some gifts, what we can do is get them allied with us and we can call in trade for caravans from the will, which would be nice. And we have a whole bunch of junk we would really like to get rid of right about now. For example, there's a whole bunch of hats we've got that we took off people that we knocked unconscious. It, it, it can just all go. Let's buy ourselves some happiness. I think the whole joy of this is just managing to clear the map of all this gunk. The, uh, the extra, the extra relations we get to decide, pretty good. They're almost up to an alliance with us. I, mm, no, I'm tempted to give them more, but we'll hold off. Down here, we're still continuing with our power brick expansion. By the time we're finished, this will allow us to support a lot of greenhouses. We're going to be switching over to an entire greenhouse-based economy just to give us more resilience to uh, possible negative events in the future. That also reminds me we should uh, accept this quest. The uh, The comments were pretty overwhelmingly in favour of the Psychic Emanator. There was some request for the Architect leg, but uh, by and large, this overwhelmed it. We've got how many days to do this? 36 days. That's plenty of time. Half a year. No problems at all. Oh, and Pika's Praetor Ceremony is coming up. We should quickly get those wooden barricades built. We would like a few more of those side trainers. Our newest prisoner, uh, Tomboy. The only female we could find is called Tomboy. Unfortunately, they've got smoke leaf dependence, which means they are staying there. They're staying there until that smoke leaf dependence is over. Dear Lord, why is it every wood we get has some sort of critical problems? This mob of misfits is... Uh, Yes, they're an interesting playstyle having to take just random pawns. You end up with just a collection of oddballs. Quest-wise, time to grab uh, Pika's Silex. Now, I don't, some people don't like this, we're getting the Silex, but realistically what we're using the Silex for now is we're going to give people one level in it, a whole bunch of people one level in it, so just so we can speed up recruitment when we do get around to more recruiting. Once, once we sort out food, which reminds me, we need to go shopping. We need to get in the world map and find ourselves a bunch of cows. Our guests should have a, a nice time in the sauna. Once we're done with them, we'll uh, give another five people, I think, Silinx at level one to see if they can't get word of trust. Uh, for the time being, our current prisoner will do nothing. Uh, we're almost finished here, but I think I'm going to finish this. I should have finished this earlier, but uh, I was worried if we got another toxic fallout, so I just wanted to have this, at least the start of this in place, in case we got a volcanic winter or a toxic fallout, we'd have a chance to survive it. As it is, if we got hit by one now, we should be okay, but before that went in, yeah, things might have been an awful lot more dangerous. Anyway, temperature control, recreation, all of this needs to be started right here. This is going to be our most opulent recreational room I've ever created. We're going to have marble billiards tables, of course. Uh, marble poker tables, more marble billiard tables. We're going to use uh, nothing but alpaca wool armchairs for everyone because, of course, uh, a giant flat screen television. We'll, we'll probably put in uh, more chairs for that later. But for the time being, I think that should cover most of it. Oh, and uh, we want to put in another poker table over here, but once we've moved that statue out of the way, then we're going to smooth all these marble floors. Anything that doesn't, isn't smoothed marble, we're going to actually place marble floors. Just not quite yet. We're running a little bit low on the marble front. Yeah, we're at a 437. It's, uh, it's enough to get us by, but we're not going to be flooring this whole area just yet. And I think once this area is finished, we might actually break this open and join it up with the rest of our uh, sort of giant room here that's sort of our extremely impressive dining hall. Oh, yeah, at the same time, we gave five people a one, level one Silink. None of them got word of trust, so that was a uh, yeah, bit of a waste. Oh well, uh, next up, oh, we scanned some gold. Excellent. Is it anywhere going to be inside our expansion radius? I think, I think expansion-wise, I'd sort of like to grab, nab these two bits here so we can get more steel. We're going to need that to finish off our solar brick. 
and uh, we do need to get a team out hunting components. Unfortunately, I'm just waiting until a couple of negatives wear off, namely the justified executions. They'll be worn off in about 1.3 days, and I think at that point we can start uh, venturing out on the map doing trading and collecting components. While this is going on, let's have a quick look at our weapons locker over here. We've used this one to store all the assault rifles and SMGs. They take up far less space, and this allows us to just, well, not waste so much space storing stuff. I don't know if you figure this is cheaty, but I just like it as a way to just dump stuff out of the way, as opposed to where it just ends up on the ground in here and you have a pretty hard time finding it half the time. I don't know, maybe it's OP, but I think it's sort of a convenient, well, for weapons anyway. At the same time, we've also put in a bunch of wardrobes. So you'll see we've got a, yes, a whole bunch of things full of clothing. Now, they seem to be limited on, in mass and items. So you can put in either a max amount of mass or a max amount of items, but yeah, I think it works out pretty good. It just does allow us to stack up those clothes without having to without having to cover an entire base of them. Which reminds me, we're going to need a caravan to get rid of most of those anyway. Uh, but first, first we're going to get our recreational area done. I like to, having these tables up and running so that our people can dine here, instead of uh, having to go all the way back down here to find a dining table or over here. A quick trip from a bulk goods trader flying overhead, and we've managed to offload a whole bunch of junk. Hopefully this will re reduce our wealth by a bit. It's starting to get a little bit uncomfortably large. However, we've got steel, beer, components, an advanced component, a bunch of medicine, and we picked up some gold just so that we, well, we, it, it's a very light trading commodity. Uh, at the same time, we've been cleaning out the map of all the meat on it, because of course we have, and our fridge is looking comfortable. Very, very comfortable again. I, I think we can relax a little bit on that front. And I think, in fact, I think we can relax so much we may just demolish all of these. Um, well, it would be nice to keep them. I think we need this steel for other projects in the interim. And this is honestly just a waste of electricity for us. We can demolish those afterwards and we're going to go with a pure greenhouse approach, at least for now. And all of this, all of this stuff is going to help us. I really should have done a lot more testing on food before I started this challenge because I'm learning, I'm learning an awful lot about uh, what it requires to do a lot of food production. Our, uh, our recreational area up here is looking pretty, pretty damn spiffy if I do say so myself. Extremely impressive, lots of of incredibly good stuff. We've got uh, your marble billiards tables right there, your excellent marble poker tables. Actually, if that's an excellent, what's the recreation power? 161%. Hell yeah, 146 on the pool tables. I'm going to have to do a, a tutorial on these because which ones you use kind of matter a fair bit. Uh, we ran out of alpaca wool, so we've been switching over to some wooden chairs for a few things. We've got a couple of excess dining tables around the outside, just to really extend the reach of that. So we want to prevent people as much as possible from eating without a table. Uh, how are you guys going in there yet? Every time we demolish one of these, we do get one component back. So what we're losing with this is 25 steel for every one of these I demolish. Which I know is, is monstrous, but... Yeah, we need the steel. We desperately need the steel to finish this off. I want to finish this off and wall it in, so that we don't have to worry about this getting destroyed in some sort of drop raid. Right now we have a caravan being put together. That caravan is going to head out and nab us some more components. Uh, as well as that, our food is sort of getting... Yeah, the, the potatoes are going nuts, and that's that's without the, the other potatoes that are up there. We see it's not even including those. We have well over 9,000 potatoes at this point. It's great. I've even had to open up the second fridge again, just so we can keep all of those potatoes going. Uh, where else is it? Oh yes, and everyone's out currently scouring the, the map of wildlife. Just anything that's got any kind of meat on its bones, we're killing it and taking it. An interesting quest has shown up. We've been uh, busy finishing this off. At the same time, our people are out on the world map heading towards a, a node of components. Well, about six of them. And a quest, well, there's two. This one here is, we're not taking, namely because there's not really... Okay, three Resurrector Mech Serums on any other playthrough I'd be very into. Unfortunately, on this playthrough, people are expendable, so we don't really care so much if someone dies. And we would have to deal with two raids consisting of about 209 enemies. Twice. So that would be 418 enemies, and they would all come within the space of eight days. Which, no, two raids of that size within eight days, that would be, um, that would be difficult. We would be, it, it would be fun, but, ugh, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risks. The rewards are not worth it. But the ship crash, however, this one, this one is interesting. This one here for 10, well, we'd want the 10 honor, of course. We don't want anything else here. But it's one of those ones, shuttle crash lands, and then a bunch of people from the Greybush Union will attack. And so long as we kill those tribes people, we get to keep the, uh, or... We basically get the honor. Sonic Sonico? Yeah, number 30 Sonico is our uh, ascetic. They're also abrasive, which won't be good for them. But I'm thinking uh, number 30 Sonico, yeah, you're going to get all of that tasty, tasty honor. Now, you're abrasive, so it will mean you'll kind of get annoyed by some things, but that's okay. 
We only want you to get you up a few levels. Now, where is it crashing? You... Well, that's just perfect. Wait, 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 wait. The ship crashes here, which means they'll have to come into our kill box. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's, that's beautiful. And they're tribals as well, which means they shouldn't have any doomsday weaponry. Nice. Okay, they will attack in precisely four hours. This is a, an eight-hour quest. Yeah, shuttle arrives in eight hours. So in four hours' time, the tribals will arrive and we can start killing them. Oh, and guys, don't don't damage the walls. Seriously, you're guests. If you're going to crash, you know, crash in a more controlled manner. I suppose that's not what crashing's... Ne never mind, you know what I mean. Well, here they come. And it's, it's sort of pathetic, to be honest. There's 53 of them and they're all armed with spears and... Uh, they're all close combat, basically. We pull the animals back inside. I have uh, one door left open here. K Dad's gonna close it. Uh, that means they should now all go for the kill box. Uh, they might take a second, so we might have to put a wall back there just in case. Actually, let's put a quick steel wall. Those ones are easy to build. Well, we wall that in, but I will admit they're being a bit annoying. They're actually digging at walls and stuff. They're damaging our kill box. Uh, let's just set off a quick berserk pulse here, maybe to slow them down. Maybe that'll convince them to stop attacking the walls and start attacking our people. Come on, hurry up, I should... What the... Oh god, they got in amongst the dogs, what the... Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, one second while we open this door. I think we're going to have to do this a slightly different method than usual. Uh, hmm. You, open that door. The rest of you, we're going to form a kill line. Firing squad, assemble. Oh god. This is going to be a very simple plan. We open the door, and then our firing squad opens fire. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's uh, have everyone hold fire for one second. We don't want to kill. Number 35, Alanism. Alanism. Oh, God, K-Dad. How did I mess this up so badly? <sighs> yeah, you two uh, run that way, maybe? Okay, now everyone... Now you can open fire. Fire at will. Yep, there we go. Come on. Yeah, that's not good. Jesus. We need uh, we need more lines of attack on them. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we need more lines of attack on them. That's better. Okay. K Dad got added there. Jarek, you're down. Oh, this is a mess. Yep, that's working well enough. I mean, yeah, they're broken. Ah, that was a mess. I mean, next time I should have just went out into the field and fought them. That would have been simpler. And dead. Rescue shuttle arrived. Oh, please tell me the rescue shuttle's not going to be somewhere stupid. Oh, wait. Nice and close by. Fine by me. Oh, yeah, time to fix this mess. Oh, God, and rescue everyone. How's Jarek doing? Six hours. You'll be fine, Jarek. Sorry about the mess. Uh, we're going to have to rescue our animals as well. We lost a couple of donkeys and alpaca, but, you know, it, it'll be okay. I think we'll be fine. God, what a... Look at what they did to all the walls. Okay, that's a new one on me. I didn't think they'd actually break all the walls like that. I, th I I just assumed they'd go into the kill box like a normal raid. This is the first time I've dealt with one of these shuttle ones where they've actually landed where we can funnel them through the kill box. Note to self, don't funnel them through the kill box. Go kill them in the field. Anyway, let me, uh, let me tidy this up. Ooh, that looks tasty. That looks real, real tasty. We'll take it all. We'll take every single piece of it. All right, everyone, move in. This is going to be an awful lot of mining. While we're here, it also turns out there's a little bit of local meat we can tap into. Uh, let's uh, have you go berserk. Okay, you two are fighting. Let's, uh... yeah, you can go berserk too. Oh, damn it, that's a two on one. I don't want that. <laughs> Dear Lord, I didn't realize how long it would take those two to kill each other. Randy heard we were having fun and decided they wanted in. So, um, chaotic mech hive dropping everywhere. That's not a lot of arrows. Like, I'm looking at those arrows and I mean, there's some arrows, but there's not the normal chaotic amount. Please tell me these are not all centipedes. 
Okay, we're going to have to let them land and see where they're hitting. Okay, one of them's landing in the bedroom. Yep, that seems perfectly reasonable. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's going to be awkward. A bunch of them are landing outside. Oh, one of them is landing in here. You, we got to take care of. We can't let you get into our power systems. Let me have a quick look and see what we're going to be dealing with or what's our uh, emergency criteria. To... This is going to be a mess no matter what way we look at it. The main ones we have to worry about, though, are this one down here. This one down here we need to take care of immediately. This one over here we need to take care of immediately. And this one over here we need to take care of immediately. So we have a few small teams to look at these. If they turn out to be centipedes, it's going to be a very red alert situation. Over here we have someone prioritising repairing that wall. We're going to lock that door. That should mean anything else will have to come in through our kill box. Well, assuming we get that wall repaired. Um, just the way it's going, unfortunately. Uh, do we need to close that? No, that door will close there. So, yeah. It'll be a little bit of a shorter run in the kill box. Oh, God, they took out that one as well. Oh, my God. God, they're so annoying, that last raid. And, you know, Randy just timed it. He's like, after that raid, we're immediately going to hit you because that's Randy for you. All right, let's see what we got to deal with. Okay, Ooh, slow that way the hell down. That door is now held open. Yep. And what are you? Scyther. That's okay. I'm good with Scyther. Scyther, no problems. Uh, down here, Scyther. Wait, all Scyther? Wait, let me double check. That's it. That's all we're looking at is 18 Scythers. Wow, that was like, I was very, very worried there for a minute. But no, nope, turns out we're, oh, stay away from Cody, you monster. <laughs> nope, never mind, never mind. Um, this should be fairly okay. We have three people there to take care of that one. And I think this is a good time to demonstrate. They're attacking this wooden bed at the moment, which is fine. We'll just move them out of there. But it's a good time to demonstrate another mod that was recommended to me in the comments. This one is uh, for managing bedrooms. Now you can see here, you can assign with lover. So you can reassign someone and it actually tells you who already has a, a husband or lover with them. So you can actually group people up. Oh, wow, I should really be grouping more people up. I don't think I've been paying as much attention as I should have. But anyway, CM Dark. Uh, they are also 16, so you can put in a search function as well, meaning we can reassign. This is perfect when you're running a large colony like this. And how many people do we have or couples or lovers? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I definitely have missed a few couples. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out in a minute. First, we're going to try and survive this raid. Uh, that's assuming... Oh, and some of the prisoners might not survive. We're currently trying to capture a couple of the prisoners from the last raid. Uh, but they were pretty bad injured. We kind of sh riddled them full of bullets. Most people took a lot more bullets than it took to knock them down. I think this one down here is well sorted. We've got about four people underway. Come on, come on. Done. Perfect. You can all get back to work for now. Uh, how are we doing over here? Yeah, that one's still killing the bed. And over here. Come on, kill it, kill it, kill it. Done. Jeez, that was very efficient. Um... If it goes after the statue, I don't care. It's an annoyance, but I'm not going to risk people getting sliced up going in there. Oh, damn it. Yeah, we got one of them about to pop out here. I've left a little squad here to take care of this, and there's someone coming back to repair that wall. If we can repair that wall in time, then it's just a kill box issue, and we just riddle them as normal. Well, this turned out to be a horrible mess. A bunch of our people got injured. We had to take on a couple of scythers there at far closer range than I would have liked. Uh, you, maybe, maybe don't start shooting just yet. Come on, get through, get through, get through, get through, get through, get through, get through. <laughs> nice. Oh, what are you doing in there? Oh, they're already started arriving. Uh, time to get a whole team in here. Scythers are a little bit tricky to kill. Well, Scythers may be an annoyance, but once you get a good enough firing line, they have a tendency to melt just like anything else. Jesus. Ooh, made it almost all the way to get to a pawn. Uh, we got about three left there. Yeah, that'll be fairly easy. Yeah, let's skip this forward a bit. Exciting, but a little bit uh, nerve-wracking at times. I have to give it to Randy. Killbox fixed. Uh, bodies hauled out of the way. The, no negatives for seeing corpses anymore, which is... It, it's caused some people to be a little bit unhappy. Also, all the injuries, you know, the bruises, the cuts, all of that stuff. Uh, Kedad, are you a pyromaniac? Is that... Yeah. Kedad was one of the ones that got really ganged up on during that last uh, fight we had with the, the tribals. Uh, how are we looking over here? Yeah, we're going to have to de deconstruct that crash pod, but now now we can actually get on to how we want to do our crops. Um, what we're doing over here is we're making basically a sun lamp room here. Very, very similar to, well, pretty much identical to this one. And we're going to start seating them in. These solar panels will be able to power them all during the day. And as long as we keep enough battery backup, I think we got four up here. Uh, you know what? Let's stick in two more batteries just to be on the safe side, but that should be plenty according to my testing. 
that means you'll be able to run 16 sun lamps during normal times and about 14 sun lamps during volcanic winters. That means what? Three, six, nine, 12. Oh, we're going to need one more. I'll say we'll leave this one as it is, but I think we'll convert this one into another sun lamp room. After all of that busy work, we have... Oh, actually, let's zoom out a bit and show all the sun lamps. There you go. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirty, forty. Ah, missed one. I'll put one over here as well. So the plan, or the theory behind all of this. Well, once we put roofs over all of these and we switch them all over to sun lamps, that means they should be protected from anything that can come at them from above, say volcanic winters and mm, toxic fallouts. With both of those get taken care of, they should be able to grow all year round. And since they're running off solar power, which won't be affected by either of those, or well, not in a way that was really matter, what that means is we can run every single one of these without interruption, unless two things happen. One is a cold snap, in which case we'll have to install three campfires to keep the whole place warm, or two is a heat wave, which will overheat the plants, which it won't kill them though, it'll just cause them to stop, uh, to stop growing. But heat waves only last a day or two. The other thing that can uh, annoy us is solar, ah, solar eclipse. That will knock out the sun for a day or two, but in that instance we just turn off the lamps. We'll lose a day or two of growing, but yeah, we're going to have more than enough. What was the numbers I figured out on this? Each one of these setups, as in three lamps, assuming it's all producing food, will support about 12.7 pawns. That's assuming, though, that all of that food is turned into simple meals. If we're splitting that meals up with meat and we've got a, a meat source from somewhere else, then you can double that. Let's say that's uh, 12 per triple stack. That's 12, 24, 36, 48. So that's 48 pawns we can support entirely on simple meals with just with those. This over here, though, is going to be dedicated towards uh, a few different things. Namely, this is going to get a psychoid plant so we can make uh, tea. And this is going to get a smoke leaf so we can make a uh, smoke leaf. And this is going to get us heal root so we can have some heal root lying around the place. Uh, heal root does go off, so you should really keep that in a fridge. That, that should be food taken care of. Now, I haven't roofed them in just yet because it's still summer. I'll wait until the end of fall and we're getting into the, the risks of uh, cold snaps because cold snaps could cause us problems. But you notice here we're going to plant, and this is going to be corn, this is going to be potatoes, this is going to be corn. It spits them up to avoid uh, too much of a negative if we do get hit by a blight. Over here, a uh, similar thing, corn, potatoes, corn, though it depends on the location. Was it this one is, yeah, some of them have bad soil. So for example, this is going to be double potatoes and corn over here on the end. Whatever the area is, oh, and this will be just all corn because, well, we planted that first. This will give us some, this will really cut down drastically on the amount of labour required. Rice is really labour intensive. This should hopefully tide us over it. Now the problem is how much of this can we do because it's going to take a lot. Imagine we have to feed all our pawns this way. Well, we're going to need about 15 blocks. And by 15 blocks, I don't mean one of these. I mean a double one as in, well, oh, say this. Assuming we had lamps in both of these, this is what I would classify as one block. And we're going to need 15 of them. You can see these areas we've marked out here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so we can do it, assuming we can find the farmland. And we do have, we made sure we settled on a flat plain. So there's plenty of farmland around. Though we're going to need some uh, moisture pumps to get rid of some areas. We're going to need to chop down a bunch of mountains. It, it will be tricky, but I think we can provide enough food that way. That's the plan. Well, at least we have a plan now. But before we end this episode, I do want to finish this off. We have prepped this place to be excellent for recreation. We've even stuck in a couple of granite sarcophagus here so that we can put people in it for people to meditate at for solitary recreation. And what was the last thing? Ah, yes, we wanted to roof this in and put in lights. Look at this place. It's beautiful. It is absolutely divine. We've got extremely impressive, I mean... Just taking a, a quick look at Joey here. They just sat down to eat. Their comfort level spiked up because they were sitting down on a big, excellent armchair. And, oh, recreation-wise, where are you going? Gathering supplies. Never mind. This should be... Well, this should take care of a lot of our morale problems. The big bottleneck, though, is statues. We need more statues faster. I've got two people doing sculptures 24-7. Uh, namely, Pseudonym here and... What was it? Zach Loveless. So Sudenham and Zach Loveless, that has been their only goal for a long, long time. They're up to 14 and 16 artistic, respectively. That's kind of impressive. Uh, but we're going to need at least two more, probably maybe three, maybe three more artists if we want to keep up. And if we want to recruit people in a timely fashion and each bedroom needs a statue. Yeah, it's going to take a well, war revenge. One second. This whole area also roofed in now. Well, Except for the uh, the walkways, I should really roof those in as well. We have not yet 
quite gotten around to flooring it yet, but that will happen, that will happen. It's just that we want to save our stone for one large project we've got coming up. But once this is walled in, we even put in a light there and there just to make sure that people can move at full speed the whole way along. This is probably the nicest bunk, bulk confinement facilities I've created in a long time. Now, next up, we want to wall in the map. Well, actually, there's two things we want to do. I'm putting together a caravan to go out looking for more cows. We, well, any cows, cows, sh pigs, or sorry, cows, chickens, or goats. All three of those are the best for getting uh, protein substitutes or meat substitutes. Cows, of course, being the best, chickens being second, goats being third. But we need to do a perimeter wall all the way around the base. And the thing is, how much space do you want to leave between us and the edge of the map? And that all comes down to mortars. We want to be able to put together an ungodly amount of mortars by the end of this. We want at least, you know, 20 minimum, 40, you know, preferably, more than 40, much more preferably. But mortars have a bit of a downside. Uh, if we check in the steel mortars here, they have a miss radius of 13, meaning they can miss by 13 tiles. That means we need to account for that. And not only can they miss by 13 tiles, you got to remember they're an explosive shell. Well, that's the ones we're going to be using, and they can hit out up to two, two tiles beyond their, their miss. So just say we go here... And we go, there's 13. So if we hit a, sh a fire there, it could miss all the way to the edge of the map. But say we put it to there, 15. That means it can miss up to there, but the explosion will hit that point and still affect those two tiles on the outside. So if we target right there, we'll just miss the edge of the map. And if we target right there and go the opposite direction and say go to 15 as well, we could place a wall right here. And so long as we always target our mortars on this line or somewhere inside here, we should miss our wall and we should miss the edge of the map. So we could say there's a big blob of humans coming this direction or whatever, and we target our mortars here. All the mortars will land around this area, but none of the explosions will damage this wall or miss the edge of the map. And assuming the humans are somewhere in this vicinity, they will get massacred by a giant mortar barrage. Theory. So what we want to do now is put a wall all the way along the edge of the map about there. And we're going to want to repeat that calculation for each side, and that'll tell us exactly where we want to put our perimeter wall. So give me one sec. I think I'm going to have to get some animals involved in this construction project. We may want to stockpile some granite near this wall. It's going to be huge. And, uh, revenge, one second. Oh, that's annoying. Just... Actually, you know what? Not as annoying as I thought it was going to be. That uh, turned out quite handy, actually, in the end. Perfect. Where was I? Yes, uh, we're going to do this side first. Then we're going to do the opposite side. That should mean that any attacks that come in from this side will go around the wall, across the top, and then down here, keeping them far away from our soft spots over here. We want them to try and go around us. Then once that's finished, we'll wall in along there, and we'll wall in along there. That should give us a lot of space to work with. We can just go nuts planting crops and doing whatever we want, and we can finally just expand like mad. Though I am going to have to start putting down moisture pumps here. We need to get on top of moisture pumping as quickly as possible. If we can... The, the, it takes a year or so to clean out all those spots or for the moisture pumps to expand out to their maximum size. So, yeah, we're definitely going to need to work on that. That will be top priority. Oh, and I should point out for moisture pumps, yeah, I know you can basically, if you place down a moisture pump, it instantly converts whatever's underneath it, but we don't have the move mod or the mod that allows you to move things around. So we'd basically have to build it and deconstruct it and it would cost us components and resources every time we did it. Plus, it's not really in the spirit, I suppose. Oh, and we now have a trade caravan in. Please, please, please have cows. Please have... Uh, you have one rooster. Great. Great. Uh, that's... Ah, uh, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the next place and see what they've got. We traded away a bunch of junk. Insanity Lance, Sooth Pulsar, and a Psychic Harmonizer. That Psychic Harmonizer might come in handy in a bit. Uh, anyway, everyone head over here. Hopefully they've got something better on that end. Ah, uh, I was hoping they'd have some good stuff there. Oh, and we have a new recruit as well. They just joined us recently. They were uh, got with the uh, special recruitment or an inspired recruitment. They're still healing up from all the injuries they got. Oh, wait, no, that might have been a social fight. Never mind. Please welcome to the team. Fish dog? Fish dog. Fish dog. Now, I, I, I'm just going with fish dog. I can't do the dog. I, I can't pronounce it correctly. All right. Dep our first depressive, which I'm kind of impressed by. We, we, it's been so long. Uh, iron willed, minus 18%. Oh, actually, that kind of cancels it out. Oh, okay, so they've got an iron will, they're just depressive, which means they're more likely to have a lower mood, but they can survive a lower mood because... Oh, never mind. Okay, that actually kind of cancels itself out, and they're a jogger, so social, intellectual, and shooting. So we've got ourselves uh, another socially adept scientist. This is what our priority system looks like. Good luck. Good luck figuring that out. 
I kind of just forgot about it after a while. It's like, no, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's it's probably okay. We'll just we'll assign people out to what they're good at, and hopefully we've got enough of everyone to do what needs doing. The only things I concentrated on making sure they got done were we have about five dedicated crop people and about five dedicated builders. Everything else in the middle. Oh, and two dedicated artists. Everything else in the middle, it'll figure itself out. And I think we'll cut that out for today. We have a good plan in place. We're going to wall in this whole section here. At which point which point we'll be able to build whatever we want. And I think the next thing up after that will be throw in another power brick and another whole set of crops. That way we can double our entire population. However, we do need some sort of ways to create meat that is not hunting animals. We are just, we, we are killing everything that comes onto the map that has, it's bigger than a hare. Even the guinea pigs I'm killing at this point. The turkeys, the guinea pigs, everything. We could send out hunting parties, but that's an awful lot of time and effort. And as we get bigger, that will just become unsustainable. The amount of micromanagement involved in sending out a hunter, hunting party onto the world map to just settle a tile, kill animals and come back. We would literally have to set up just permanent bases to hunt stuff or something like that. And I'd rather not. I want to try and do it with purely the tools we have on hand. And I'm thinking massive amounts of cows and massive amounts of farmland to support them. We should, in theory, like just say we take this farmland, say it could support about 12.7 pounds. However, if we take half of the crops from this and fed it to animals, we should be able to get enough protein out of that if we do it in a smart way, that we should be able to produce 12 meals still for people. It's a, you know, we'll, we'll get into it later. Anyway, I know there wasn't that much action in this episode. It was more just, well, grinding out the things we need to prepare for the uh, the expansion. Anyway, I uh, hope you still enjoyed it. Good luck. Mm -hmm.